okay recorded welcome ladies and gentlemen to the culture shock i am your host seth mckendry wearing the stone cold t-shirt like always 316 you know the situation and i am here today with a new brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt a man i've known for fuck i can't even think of how long it's been well over 10 years but he is my guest today this has been in the works for I don't know how long. We'll talk about that. But introduce yourself. How's it going, everybody? I'm Roger Carpenter, uh, black belt under Omar out there at Gracie Hemet Humaita. And uh, yeah, let's get this going, man. It's going to be fun. So to bounce off the point I first made, how long have we known each other? <laughs> how old's Caleb? He's 20, he's, uh, he's 27. Okay, so yeah, 11, almost 12 years because it was just after the passing of you guys' mom when he came into the gym. Mm -hmm. He was still in school at that time, so I want to say he was 15, 16 when that mm -hmm. happened. So yeah, it's been a minute. Because I remember I was seven and Malachi was 12. So Eli and Caleb were like a year apart. So that had to be, yeah, that was right after that. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, it's fucking insane, dude. It was crazy that it's been over 10 years. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. So, I mean, I feel old. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> Shit, <I don't> <laughs> uh, all right. So. How long has it been since we've like legitimately? I don't know if we've legitimately ever had like sat down and had a one on one conversation before. If we did, yeah. I I can't remember it. No, I don't think there ever really has been. I mean, it was always just hanging out, and you know, you were young at that time, and then I moved to Arizona, and your brother went to the army, and <clears throat> now that I've moved back, we started talking more. But yeah, I think this is probably our first like one on one sit down for sure. And dude, it feels so fucking good. It like, yeah, it feels, it's pretty cool. I mean, I wish it was in person, but you know, who? Yeah, it, it's all good. What What can you do with the circumstances at hand? It's like it feels so fucking good. Yeah, it's super rad. So, luckily, I have a platform that we can do this. So, <laughs> this is fun. It's definitely different. I haven't tried it yet, so. Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. And then to do it with you too. Yeah, this is super rad. So, so it, there's a sense of comfort there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. Because I've done this for, this will be the 12th episode. I, I've, I've been doing this for 12 episodes. I, I think I know what I'm doing. Hopefully, hopefully I know what I'm doing. If I don't, then <laughs> let's just write out the shit show as long as we can. Right. Yeah. So right. somebody tells it's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so you remember that table that I uh, I was making for Caleb and you know his situation? It's yeah, actually yeah. sitting over here since nice, I nice. brought it home and I reinforced the bottoms and everything. Nice, nice. It's gonna be super rad to give to him. He's gonna like it. Yeah. Have I've, you seen pictures of it at all? Or just... yeah, I've I've sent him like progress shots and pictures and all that. So he and, knows what's up with it. Yeah, so he can like plan. Since he's a big planning guy, he wants to, you know, he wants to make sure everything can like sit straight and like do this and do that and all that stuff. Yeah. So, I I keep sending him progress pictures and all that stuff, nice. so he can know what to plan for and know how big it is, how fucking wide it is, and like where to put it. Nice. So did you build that thing nice and sturdy or did you build it to where like when you're ready, you could just choke slam his ass right through it? <laughs> no, it's it would. Uh, I mean, the glass would shatter definitely, but it would still the only thing that would happen if I choke slammed him through it is uh, it would it would stay. But the glass would shatter definitely. Good time. Because I made sure to reinforce the the bottom of the top, I yeah. made sure to. Yeah, it looks pretty damn sturdy. 
I've been building it for over a fucking year, so it better be sturdy, dude. Shit, dude, it's gonna grow roots and fucking tree branches. I mean, fuck it, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Make more tables that way. All right. Oh, yeah. So this is our first legitimate conversation. And piggybacking off that, uh what was it? I can't remember how we first I, I remember it was through Instagram. But I can't remember what initiated that conversation. It, it's been over, fuck, over a year, right? Maybe well, yeah, even two. It's probably two to three, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. went back three years ago, and I think that's when I really started promoting my Instagram a little bit more, when I got heavy into my jiu-jitsu, you know? Not like my Instagram's anything fucking Because it was, it was 2018, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... But I, I don't know what sparked it up either. I think probably just our stories, something on the feed, and we just started bullshitting, and we had some good talks. And we would be like, oh, yeah, what's up, dude? It's been fucking 12 years. How you doing? <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. And uh, when me, we were talking about this beforehand, before we started, but when Caleb came down, and he since I recently, I'm a, I'm an adult now and I don't have to pay taxes yet because <laughs> I don't have a federal job, but it's coming, sucker. yeah, it's coming for me. But, uh, like I, I, I turned 18 and Caleb told me that it's super fucking weird to know that I'm 18. Yeah, it is different. I mean, Anytime you were around before, it was like just all of us. I was like a and, fucking little tiny yeah. kid. Yeah, you were just one of the shitheads in the house. You know, <laughs> it's come back and like now you're turning into your own little adult. Got all this going on for you. And like we're talking, you're schooling and stuff. Super rad. And like I actually have fucking plans for what I want to do with my life. And I got a fucking full grown beard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's getting there. Shut up. <laughs> It's Dude, missing in a couple spots. Well, you you know that I'm working with what I got. <laughs> Better than your brothers. Well, it depends on which brother you're talking about. Because Mal- Malachi is, is straight fucking. Whew. He's he's full caveman, man. Nice. Caleb, on the other hand, I think that mm-hmm. might be yeah. Either mm-hmm. Caleb or Eli, one of the two. Well, I think they both got the Native American side a little more on the beards. Yeah, probably, because, yeah, that was, mm -hmm. so, we already talked about how we met, how long we've known each other, two down, let's talk about (laughs) jujitsu. I'm good at that. I I, I know, and uh, so, going back to Caleb and jujitsu and all that, that's how you guys first met, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, your brother came into the school, started training with us, and... Uh, it was back when he had emo hair. Don't even get me started, dude. I see, <laughs> I see the Facebook pictures, man, and I was like, with the hair and the piercings, and... When he came in, and he was with his girl, mm-hmm. we were together then, and I used to call her bomb sickle because she had... Uh, red white and blue hair like a bomb sickle dude and mm-hmm. it, caleb would drive me nuts and then he finally <laughs> cut it, then he finally cut his hair and i was like oh, okay all right, all right i can deal with this little shit yeah finally fuck yeah and his jujitsu became annoying really annoying and then because of his doing, hair no just because of his skill dude he's good uh, what you know what I mean? <laughs> He was just annoying on the mats, dude. He was hard to get. And then uh, kickboxing started, and he got into the Thai classes, and then we started the MMA classes. And then next thing I know, I was getting head kicked by him. Um, <laughs> geez, this kid, man. So, yeah, it was super cool to watch him, like, just transition as a person and as a martial artist, you know? So. And, like, evolve. Yeah, and then the whole, like, army thing, you know, because he lived with me for, <clears throat> shoot, it was months almost a year before he went to the army and sitting there burning his ears back together so he could get I, I seen and... that video I, yeah i, I remember i seen that video on facebook it was it looked brutal yeah dude crazy times man we went to some junk fights some good fights oh god <laughs> crazy <laughs> times so uh 
I remember there was this one time. Uh, it was I can't remember what what was really going on because I was I was I wasn't like real young at the time, but I I was old enough to go to the gym with you guys. Because I remember uh, it was there were certain times where Caleb was allowed to bring people into the gym. Yeah. He'd normally bring like Malachi in and then he'd bring me in. I wasn't allowed to roll with you guys, but he'd just send me over to the punching bag. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, it was Malachi and Caleb and they were picking rolling partners and uh everybody was all lined up right and then malachi looked at larry and he was like i want you <laughs> and then they they just uh i can't remember what happened after that because caleb saw me looking over and he was like do what you told i was like okay <laughs> Dude, larry was a beast too. that's a big boy i think he's a police officer now or something i know i was following him on facebook for a while and- so many people, man, you fall out of contact, you know. Mm-hmm. But that dude was a beast, too, dude. Just a big ass man. <laughs> and he wasn't even a man then. <laughs> That's the crazy part. That dude was like 17, 18, I think. Really? Yeah, because uh, he was either still in school or just out of school at that time. Because he looked like a grown ass man. And then some. We got like he ate two girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, as we talk about jujitsu, I remember there there was this one time. It was uh, you had your um, brown belt, I think. And no, no, you just got your black belt at that time, and you made that Instagram post about it. And I was like, I'm proud of you, dude. You were like, when are you going to get your ass in here? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's uh, that's everybody. That's and, I that's like, <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, when I can afford it, dude, because <laughs> I don't think they're just, I think we've already maxed out our free trials on this family. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. so as we go, we already talked about jujitsu and how we met all that. So favorite MMA rivalry of all time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's coming up, dude. I I mean, uh, the Poirier and Connor, the first one was great. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. Connor was, that was Connor's time. You know, he was on his freaking run. He was killing people. I've been a huge Poirier fan for a long time back when, I mean, Korean zombie days. And I saw that documentary on them on Netflix, got a lot of respect for him from that. But uh, so when him and Connor banged, I was, right away on Poirier's team, you know, and then Connor got him and I was like, yeah, you know, God, God, Connor's good. And I respect all fighters. Yeah. Uh, so um, Connor hype trained for a little bit and, you know, then other people come through. And so when they said to rerun it, I was telling all the guys who were watching it and I was like, I feel me personally as a jujitsu guy and, you know, the things I have done in martial arts, I would need to get out of that first round. Once I'm out of that first round where I got knocked out, now where are you even playing fields? You know what I mean? We're zero zero at this point. And I can see the struggle in Poirier, man. And then that second round, he just he turned it on those leg kicks, set him down, knocked him out. I was like, yeah. So then when they said, yo, we're going to rerun this like right now, I think this is the best rubber band match that to date, to date, just because the hype's running with it and they're both primed out, you know? I mean, and then again, I mean, Connor Nate would be another good one. Shoot, dude, you know, I mean, that went Nate Chotin. Connor got the decision, I believe, on that second one. So, man, that would be another good one. And honestly, I would love to see Connor's again. Him and uh, my God, Donald Cerrone, my boy, fighting tonight. Um, you know, that first one, I think Connor won both, though, didn't he? I, I think he, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he won both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that first one was a banger, and the second one he got him with that weird uh, shoulder strike, which I think it's because I remember in the second one, uh, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I remember in the second one there was those memes going around of Steve, uh, Stephen A. Smith trying to act like an MMA analyst. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah and was everybody was just funny. like, "Shut the fuck up! You don't know what you're talking about. Go back to basketball." Like. <laughs> 
I think it's funny that him and Poirier went back and forth exchanging those shoulder shots and showing like they're annoying, but the effectiveness was just he caught like Cerrone perfect on the bridge of that nose that night. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it was just the placement because him and Poirier were throwing those things back and forth, you know, but I mean, it is what it is. I feel like Connor got in there to close that distance to get away from Cerrone that night because he knows Cerrone's on fire, boy. My boy lights you the fuck up. You get in there, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna stick with the uh, Poirier, the Poirier Connor though, not to get too far off track. So that's also including the trill. Wait, did uh, was it just a double fight deal or did Silva and Sonnen have a trilogy? No, I think they only fought. I think the second one was just like a little because I I think there was that counts as a rivalry though, right? Because they they were talking shit back and forth. Yeah, the first one though, Silva fucking he just toyed with him all the way to the end and choked him, and then the second one he put, came in and put a statement on it. There's no need for a third match, you know what I mean? Like yeah, the first one he toyed with you, the second one he shut you the fuck up. Like you got remember, nothing to come back with. Because I remember this match. Maybe, yeah. Conan has that SOG now, Submission Underground. I mean, him and Silva fucking straight up submission grappling in the cage. I'm down with that, dude. That'd be sick. Because I remember uh, it was in the second fight where uh, for some reason, Cheo decided to do a spinning back fist. You're a wrestler. You don't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, but you're a mixed martial artist at the same time. Yeah, that is true. But you know what I mean? You, you got to... Yeah. He completely fucking missed with it and landed yeah. straight on his ass. Yeah, but he felt good. Yeah. So he landed on his ass. <laughs> and then he got kneed straight in the fucking face. And that looked like it was a hard knee, too. Straight in the face. It's crazy, like, the little mistakes how can be capitalized on, you know? like And on that level... It's because when you go like back when your brother was fighting and I mean, even just step down from UFC to Bellator, you see a lot of mistakes in Bellator that would be capitalized in the UFC. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have these kids like Chandler made that break into the UFC, knocked out Hooker, and now he's getting the title shot, you know, with uh, Oliveira. But uh, but Chandler's, I mean, he's rare, dude. He was destroying Bellator. So, I mean, there is a gap difference in these organizations that people aren't understanding. There is an elite, and then there's badasses, and then there's the rest, you know? Mm -hmm. So you really have to set your standards. It's just like collegiate, you know? Like, you could be high school, you could be college, but there's a difference. Like, there's nationals, there's collegiates, there's, you know, there's these motherfuckers. There's worlds, there's, you know. And then there's the rest of us, so. Crazy. we already talked about the rivalries and the trilogies. Yep. So talk to me about you seeing that Sergio Pettis won uh won a Bellator title, right? Yeah, I think he that was just won one. it. Yeah. yeah, he just won it. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird. I don't know what happened with him in UFC. I really like Sergio. I like the Pettis family. Because uh, I seen that um I don't mean to interrupt you, but I seen no, no. that uh Duke Rufus, for some for some reason, Duke Rufus has become one of my favorite coaches yeah. because he's the Serge, the Pettis brothers, and he did. I think he coached Ben Askren for a certain like mm-hmm. short amount of time, and just he's from what I've seen, he's a fucking amazing coach. Trevor Whitman, and watching some of his tapes back, dude, he's a monster. Yeah, I mean. He uh he had his time. I think uh, back in the day, like Anderson's days, he was a good coach back then. Mm-hmm. Um, his fighters, he has elite athletes. I think for the camp right now that's excelling and having elite athletes is Trevor Whitman's camp, man. I mean, mm-hmm. look what Rose did. Holy hell. Dude, she got- fucking murdered. <laughs> that was crazy. Then you got Usman and Usman's over there. Or, um, uh, Prince and Ghana's over there banging them up with them now, dude. Like, dude, Trevor that... Whitman, when he was on Rogan, he said, hey, I'm trying to keep it small, you know, I don't want to yeah. be that guy, but everybody wants a piece of Trevor's freaking mind, dude. That dude's a genius. 
Hindu group is, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I looked up to him a lot and I really liked the, um, <laughs> excuse me, um, Jackson, but after hearing the stuff that Cerrone was saying, how he let Winkle John just kind of take his gym and run it to the ground and turn it into a puppy mill, as we like to call it, it's just it's a sad thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Now we're missing out on that rivalry because of whatever the fuck Diego Sanchez has got going on. Holy hell, but Cerrone and him were going to fight tonight. That was that whole gym rivalry thing, you know? That would have mm -hmm. been like the yeah, yeah, yeah. seal the deal, but, you know, Diego's hanging upside down having his boyfriend beat on him. Oh, that ain't happening. I seen uh, Duke Rufus post about it on Instagram, and he was like, "Both both Predis brothers have become champions in mixed martial arts," and I was like, "Oh, that's fucking awesome, dude!" Yep. Yeah, that's a that's an accomplishment in the family. Yeah, I always and... talk about like family accomplishments. Look at the Jones family. You got two NFL players, and then you got. A world hands champion down, mi world. mixed martial artist of all. Yeah. Not a world champion, hands down, the best mixed martial artist mm -hmm. champion in the fucking world. You know what I mean? Like, what a family, dude. Do not mess with that family or you're going to get yeah. fucked up. <laughs> yeah. The milkman was not in that family. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. So going back to, uh, as you, you were talking about Rogan earlier, uh, last night, in preparation for this, I was watching some of Gordon Ryan's uh, jujitsu highlights, and bro, he's a monster! Oh, good lord, he is—he kills it, <laughs> bro. There's uh, again, how we were talking about Bellator, the UFC, mm -hmm. collegiate. You know what I mean? There's there's these levels, man. Different, and, yeah whatever john danaher is putting in their water give me this. some of it <laughs> oh man just i'll i'll just drink the sweat off that towel uh, just fucking drink um, just piss in yeah. excellence every morning <laughs> yeah you know they 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 they're good dude they're good um gordon ryan i think he's just he has the ability to break our sport down so much with well, I mean, John Downing is such a character himself, but I mean, just the way they break it down and what's the word I'm looking for? The simplicity of our sport? And he's just capitalized on it. You know, he I, he's calling submissions, dude. I mean, he he walked up against one of Wagner Roach, dude, one of the world's greatest, you know, just puts an envelope on the table, goes on the mat, and he said it before going out there. He didn't name the submission, but he said, I'm going to drag him into deep waters. So the last 10 minutes, I'll make it happen. And they went 20 minutes, got in the last 10 minutes, and he triangled them. They opened up the paper, and there's a drawing. Of a triangle. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, and the one prior to that, he called it verbally. He didn't write it down, but he said, you know, I'm going to straight on by the dude. And he had um, Roberto Jimenez, which is a beast, young black belt. His dad's a genius on the mats. And the kid is as well but uh yeah he's straight on bar that kid and just i mean yeah uh, gordon ryan and then his little brother nikki i mean yeah, he's special definitely special and it, it's it's awesome in my time because i knew like i want to say about eight years ago i was sitting around watching tv on a saturday morning and they're like oh if you're bored go down to long beach you know uh ibjjf world's champions at the uh temple or the pyramid down there where they always have it i was like holy hell i was a blue belt or something like that. i was like that's my sport it's like on the news this is rad we're gonna be something one day so to see like where it's going with flow graph how it's progressed of it, yeah over just my 10 years to see where it's going to be in another 10 like there isn't a school that i don't walk into when i'm out traveling or going and seeing that isn't packed especially with kids dude and that's so rad just seeing that it's going to be carried on into the next oh, generation yeah. and the generation after that and the next 15 to 20 generations after that and dude the loyalty in the kids at the school is way more than adults like you you'll see it's a adults come and go adults come and go but you get these kids in there and it's not the parents you know it's not the parents making them come because the waiting room isn't full of parents the kids want to come 
mats are full of kids you know what i mean like it's mm -hmm. crazy it's it's badass i love it so uh yeah i was i was watching i was listening to rogan since he he's exclusively on spotify now i watched a youtube video of how uh gordon ryan talked about he said he the reason he's not going to transition into mma is because he's waiting until everybody since he knows he's a monster and he's like killing it killing it killing it he's waiting until everybody else on his team gets as good as he is to where mm -hmm. if they go to uh jesus i'm gonna sound like such an idiot uh fuck what's the name yeah 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 yeah. I was, it was on the tip of my tongue yeah that so when they go there so the, like the entire team can be can fucking just win 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 instead of just gordon fucking winning everything right you know what i mean so the whole team yeah. can fucking kill he wants somebody to take his spot at the camp he yeah. doesn't want the camp to go stagnant not being number one on top because yeah. he's holding that crown he wants he wants to hand his crown down that's understandable he wants but to dude, pass the torch did you hear the contract one gave him like he what didn't put it? number he didn't put numbers on it but one told him go grapple wherever you want go do anything in grappling you just can't physically take an mma fight outside of us he has no he doesn't want to fight right now mm -hmm. yeah so he's he basically got signed a contract and god knows paid for what to just keep living his life and if he decides to fight then you're gonna do it with these dudes yeah on man that's the shit i'm talking about like his marketing of himself his business of himself that's I mean, a fucking amazing business decision and yeah and on top of it like his skills his skills are beyond his business decisions you know so i mean those are just, fucking on another level that's all i gotta say for Gordon Ryan. so we've talked about gordon ryan let's talk about you getting your black belt <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna like this I, I i can already tell all right so you said it was what a 10-year journey uh roughly yeah i started february i like to say valentine's day but it was like i mean in between my birthday on the 7th and valentine's day mm -hmm. of uh 2010 so yeah i uh got it september 11 no so, sorry september 8th uh 2020 so yeah, yeah, 10 years, just over 10 years. Dude, that's fucking insane. Mm. And just seeing, like, ever since we reconnected three years ago, just seeing how you're still fucking going after it, and you're, you're, let's be honest here, you're a fucking monster. If, <laughs> if, if I didn't know you, and just, like, we somehow picked a fight, I would die, legitimately, I would die. So I would not do that. If I didn't, if I didn't know you at all, and we fucking came across the street, and then you know, I'd know that, yeah, this is not the best idea for my health or just my sanity. I'm gonna die, <laughs> and that's why you're going to college because you're a smart man. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I don't want to. I already know if. Uh, because my plan is to like do all this stuff, go to college, do all that stuff, do the whole professional wrestling thing and have Caleb show me jujitsu. And what I'm thinking of doing is once, what level of black belt did you have to be to where you can be a quote unquote private instructor? Well, I think it's different with everybody. I know traditionally, <clears throat> I want to say you have to be a, second degree black belt to like fully promote another black belt so i know i have to wait a whole year before i can even get my professor stripes mm -hmm. so i'm gonna say i would i me personally i would like to open up a school but i probably won't do it until i'm at least a first degree second degree black belt that way i feel like I've put a staple on my black belt. You know what I mean? It's not like and you're not like I ordered that bitch off Amazon and went and got a turnkey school. Like and being like, oh yeah, woohoo. You put because in the you, fucking work. You figure two years as a black belt is six years, it's three years for your promotions. You know what I mean? So even if I wait till 
uh, my third stripe, I doubled my years of jujitsu, half of them as a black belt. I think that's more than enough credibility to argue with anybody that I, you know, I mm-hmm. do. <laughs> <laughs> Cause what I want to do is, you know, that I'm going to end up being a pro wrestler and all this other stuff. I, I mm-hmm. want to, I want to learn more amateur wrestling as much as I can because I just love the sport ever since like I got into it. It's, you know, and from what I've seen, all professional wrestlers, all amateur wrestlers that turn into professional wrestlers, their like ring awareness is just on point. It's so fucking smooth. And they're not having trouble just being like, uh, body slam like they're fucking straight into you know body slam yeah. drop kick you know it's fluent in those motions you know it's fucking yeah, all your yeah. shots your takedowns your falls your break falls you're you're so used to it i mean wrestling is demanding bro you guys compete so much it's just your seasons are hard camps are hard it's crazy dude did you listen to that dan gable uh Rogan? yeah yes i did <laughs> I am a pussy. I don't even care what anybody <laughs> That dude scares the shit out of me at his age. Holy hell, dude. Wow. And yeah. I'm not I'm I'm not like a wrestler. I don't get the concept of wrestling. I never did it. And like it's new to me. I'm more into it because of jujitsu now. And mm-hmm. but like to listen to that dude, man, holy heck. And then randomly I was all stone the other night and put on that stupid movie never back down it's like one of the first mma movies I, and the I, first I, thing the first thing they started talking about the kids a wrestler out of iowa and they're talking about dan gable in this movie and i was like holy hell i just watched that podcast that's <laughs> it's getting stupid but because uh you know what's some bullshit they won't let me wrestle why because ever since i turned 18 i have to get a new doctor oh. And we're like, we're having trouble with that. So what I've done is on Tuesdays and Thursdays is when I go to school, that's when I go to go to school physically. And that's just because of Woodshop. And we'll get into that later. Because, you know, Woodshop, it's what it's what I've decided to pour all of my time into. And because I can't wrestle, it's like an amazing substitute. It's a it's a fucking great skill to have. Yeah, it's awesome. So, uh, go. Uh, I was walking. It was on Thursday. I was walking out of my woodshop class, right? Because it was after school, and since I don't have a sixth period, uh, I go. And my fifth period is my woodshop class, so I just. And my grades are good. You seen my grades? I sent you a picture of them. Oh, yeah. I have all A's except for one B that's in my second period. Nice. And I'm working my ass off to get that to an A just to show my dad, this is what your student, this is what your kid's grades supposed to look like. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So uh, I was walking since they had the wrestling like room door open. Right. And I was walking to go home to call my buddy to pick me up. And uh, like the wrestling coach caught me and he was like, he was like, why aren't you in the wrestling room? I said, because I can't find a doctor. And ever since I turned 18, they uh, like they switched the health insurance stuff around and I have to find a new doctor and do all this other stuff. And since there's only five weeks left to school, I think, what's the point? I'll just (laughs) wait until I move. I'll just wait until I move, you know? Yeah, but you can't think of like, it's only five more weeks. It's five weeks of being behind if it's something you're good at. You know. What I mean? Yeah, that, that's. True. I feel like so. My professor, when I moved to Arizona, I went up there and I was training at a school. And my professor up there, people would come in and be like, "So, what did you teach yesterday?" Yes, at class. You know, Professor Steve would look at him and be like, "The secret of jujitsu," and then be like, "Well, what is that?" He'd be like, "Show yeah. up." <laughs> that's just like right? wrestling. That's just like I wrestling. All you got to do is show up. The only thing that makes you better is your feet on the mat. 100 percent You know what I mean? And just being a hard-headed, I guess. And I've, I'm pretty sure you know me. I'm pretty hard-headed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Kind of got that coke, kind of got that coconut head going on. Right. So 
But I mean, it's not <clears throat> wrestling is just a extra passion for you as of right now. Like you got out of it what you need for what the avenue you want to take it to. So, I mean, if you want to take some time off, it doesn't hurt. Just mm-hmm. stay physical, stay active. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. if you want to do like the professional wrestling, like, you know, still work your body. You know, you mm-hmm. know, all the stuff you can be doing at home. You're, you know, static squats, push ups, all that fun stuff. Just keep that body active, keep those muscles moving. Cause the last thing you want to do is take time off and then move up there and jump into something real heavy and, and then be like, like, oh, be a fucking yeah. blow, be, be gassed out 25 seconds in, you know. Not only that, just injuries, you know, you get prone yeah. to injuries when your body stops doing that stuff. Because you know, I, I, I have a history of a, uh, yeah, for wrestling, I, I have, um, one bad knee oh yeah and there's this one wrestling story that i told uh, caleb here's what happened so i showed up to the tournament and what you should not do is i was underweight by 0.1 right so i cut like 0.1 too much which was fucking screwed me over and i had nothing to eat at all and my teacher was or not my teacher my wrestling coach he had a granola bar in his back pocket. He was like, eat this and then go back on the scale. So I did. And then I made weight like perfect on the dot. Right. And this was freshman year. So Jesus Christ, I've gotten fat. <laughs> freshman year, I wrestled at 155. Because freshman year was 155. Sophomore year was 160. Uh junior year was 170 this year i was going to wrestle at 175 and uh, last year is going to be 250 fuck no (laughs) (laughs) and uh so i the moral of the story is uh i came to the yeah he gave me the granola bar he was like okay now you're good to wrestle so I, I wrestled just completely dehydrated, fucked up, right? Don't know my ass from my fucking, don't know my ass from my elbow. So, like, I wrestle, and this dude, I made it all the way to a certain point in the tournament. I can't remember uh, how far it was, but this dude I was wrestling looked like he had to cut an arm and a leg to fucking cut at my weight which was 155 the dude looked yoked like he was on some special arnold sauce right and i looked at my coach i was like you want me to wrestle him like is he even in the same weight class <laughs> can, we, can we reweigh this guy real quick yeah like come on the scale's got to be broken <laughs> so what the dude does is uh, match starts right picks me up slams me on my head don't remember anything for the rest of it until i regain consciousness with my hand up oh no and apparently uh i i regain consciousness my hands up i'm like oh i'm like holy shit cool (laughs) and then uh uh i look over at my coaches and they're just all like and i'm like did i do good They're like, fuck yeah. I was like, okay, I can't remember this. <laughs> so That's awesome. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. So I think that proves that I got that second gear. That when it like it clicks, it fucking clicks, and I just like murder shit. Yeah, you know, um, I get told in the gym a lot, like you make it look so easy. I'm like, it's not easy. It's, it's just a lot of hard people. work. I think it's just I've done it so much. It's just fluent. You know what I mean? And it's like, repetition. Up, yes, 100%. Like, I bring up the, um, <clears throat> like, the fact of, like, the example, I'm a framer, okay? Like, I can walk by a wall and there could be a nail hanging out. I could pull my hammer out of my bags, hit that nail, pull my hammer back in my bags and keep walking without mm-hmm. missing a beat, you know, yeah. because I do it a million times a day. So transfer that time onto the mat and you get a black belt. Mm-hmm. So uh, that happened, right? And uh, once I told my dad about it and everybody, they got all worried. They were like, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? I was like, I'm standing here, aren't I? I'm fine. Like, (laughs) I'm good. 
<laughs> you don't need to worry. I'll be fine. I'll just sleep it off. You know, <laughs> like I'll take a hot shower. And actually, no, I take cold showers instead of hot showers. I think that's just like a wrestling thing. But yeah, I'll just I take a I like the cold ones too. Yeah, I'll I'll just take. They feel so much better afterward. You know. I agree. Like, I'll just fucking take a cold shower and I'll be fine. And like my after tournament go to for every single tournament I've ever been in is a is a pizza and a big ass gallon of Pedialyte. After after go to every single time. Mine's the closest brewery. I want a nice steak and a cold beer. See, I can't drink. I, I got a few. I got a few years, so <laughs> we. So I got to stick with the Pedialyte. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and my dad knows at that point for that tournament, and he's gotten mad at me over the years. For there's been several nights where he's he's told me he's like, "Oh, you want food? Like I made food for you." I was like, "Can't do it, cutting." He's gotten so pissed at me that. At, there's certain times where he's almost forced me to eat, but I'm like, no, I'm just going to sleep. Can't do it. You know, whoever came up with wrestling season, they're an asshole, anyways. Because you, <laughs> you have to cut weight through Thanksgiving, Christmas, like all the good stuff, and it's just watch the family eat while you sit over there with your little water cups. Yeah, like, <laughs> dude, there was this one time. Um, it was uh, it was during uh, Thanksgiving. And we'd go, you know, Nana, right? Mm-hmm. So you know how she'd make her uh, legendary Thanksgiving meals where like is is fucking everything. All right. So it was one one year when I was cutting and it sucked <laughs> because like all the food she made because she makes some really fucking good food. All the food she made looked so good and she was going to make me some this big ass plate but i told her i couldn't and it broke my heart to tell like tell her no because she's the sweetest person i've ever met in my life with all exception of my mom she's the sweetest person ever right so it broke my heart to tell her no i was like i'm sorry i can't and it fucking i was just looking over there like oh my god why am i doing this It sucks cutting weight, dude. A pile it, of dog shit looks good at times. Yeah, it made me reconsider. I was like, uh <laughs> it's like, no, is this last, what I really want to do? My last tournament, I waited to the last minute to cut all the weight, and I was like, you're stupid. <laughs> because I watched Professor Omar, like right now he's competing in uh pans, and I want to say it's like two or three more weeks out. But he's training in his sweatsuit right now, and he's almost on weight. So what he does is he gets himself on weight, and then he eats a little, then he gets himself well underweight, and then brings himself nurturing back up to weight. And he goes on to the mats like that, and obviously 12, 13, going on 14-time world champion, it fucking works. So mm-hmm. It's a proven process. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to change my approach on my next weight cut with that idea, you know. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you're already in there torturing yourself on the mats to improve yourself for this tournament. You might as well just get it all over with in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of our camps, we're not going hard the day before our freaking matches. You know, we're just in there focus rolling, making sure everything's flowing, got our game plan together. So why are you going to sit there and neglect your body all the way up to the end, just beat it up through the whole thing and then bring it back to life? Yeah. It makes some sense. Be like some Frankenstein type shit. Yeah, I don't know. As long as nothing's going on my butt. <laughs> uh, that's see, that's the exact answer I expect out of you. <laughs> like, and that's why we're here. <laughs> that's exactly what I expect to hear out of you. <laughs> it's like I'm talking to Malachi, except for your, uh, your, like your, you can murder me, and he, he can, but in you in a different way. <laughs> couple ways actually but yeah. you i'm legit like i mean i know you know we're we're family but i'm terrified of you 100 you know, I'm I'm... this motherfucker <laughs> dude. but i'm legit i know i shouldn't be but i am i'm legitimately terrified <laughs> i tell people all the time like i got all these tattoos because how big my heart is like i have to look scary or i just be getting taken advantage of so. yeah that's true and what Malachi told me was, uh, 
I've noticed that this has turned into a very family oriented podcast because we're family, man. I don't oh, give a shit sure. if I don't give a shit if uh, we don't have the same last name or we like I don't give a fuck about blood or any of that. We're family. Oh, 100 percent. And this is what he told me. Uh, he said um, he said, when you wrestle, what you got to do is he said, my advice to you, because he never had to cut weight. Lucky bastard never had to cut weight. So he was like, wrestle at a weight you don't have to cut for. Yeah, I agree. And and I tried that. And it was it was hard because like I've for those like weight classes, I've I'm always used to like running in the backyard or you know, doing something to keep active. Right. And it it would never work. I would always be underweight. So I'd have to cut down, I'd have to be put at like 160 or 155, even one time 145. For how fucking tall I am, 145, it oh, it's scary. It I saw my ribs, dude. This shit sucked. <laughs> that is. I think after high school, there shouldn't be any more weight cuts allowed. Just because like I I I could imagine it's hard for a kid to maintain through high school with your development, your natural development of your body. It it just wants to grow. So now you're trying and to it's kind of like weight. super unhealthy. 100 percent, it is you know so to maintain a weight it's got to be hard so i think you know it when um derek was in school in arizona he was wrestling they actually did the, the hydration test on the kids like before season they just randomly brought them in and they checked their weight and it tells them like their full hydration their mass what they have and then it tells you like okay this fat ass is 185 he can go to 170 that's healthy anything below that unhealthy he cannot do that you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it, it i thought that was really cool and joe <clears throat> talks about that too just the weight cuts i think it's i don't think it helps mentally i mean these fighters are already going through enough and even just wrestlers and grapplers like ourselves i mean you go through enough mentally you don't have to get punched in the face but it's still a fight dude. it's still you know you're in there win or lose you know it's a constant like battle yeah 100 percent. so uh what what for my profession i found out that i would want to continue trying to do some jujitsu but i would never have the time because if you think about it they're on the road 200 days a year 200 to 250 days a year so right. if you think about it where am i going to find the time within those 250 days well, I mean, if you're making the right of money, you just pay a badass black belt like me to travel. Yeah, later. that's what I was going to do. That's what I was getting at. Because that's what fucking Matt Heafy does. I, mm -hmm. You know Matt Heafy, the lead singer for Trivium. Trivium, yep. Yeah, his fucking... Dude, their, their newest album is fucking amazing, by the way. It's, you just answered the question for the heavy metal one. <laughs> <laughs> dude. And, like, Matt Heafy, uh, the fucking... He did an interview with uh, Corey Taylor, who is one of my favorite all-time people. Just, like, singers, everything. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Good dude. And same with Matt Heafy. He's just a good dude. And he's also a badass. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I, last time I checked in on him, I want to say he was at his purple. Ooh, that was, I got to say, he's got to be in his brown by now, dude. I mean, I, I don't think the pandemic would have slowed him down with a private instructor. Because uh, from what I've seen, he, after, I remember I told you about this when you came down, that mm -hmm. he uh, got a private instructor to travel with him when mm -hmm. he was on tour. And he said that jujitsu made him a better guitarist and a, just a better person overall. Oh, yeah, dude. Just the, it, everything. Everything, bro. 100%. And Maynard James, uh, Maynard James Keenan, who's just mm -hmm. a fucking ama amazing musician, amazing vocalist. Yeah, dude, I think he's Wiz gotta... Khalifa is a Muay Thai, dude. He really badass Muay Thai, dude. Look up Wiz's tie, bro. I'll, 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 I'm gonna have to check that out. But dude, yeah, I mean, it's out uh, there. Maynard James Keenan, he's a purple belt, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's this, there's that video going around from like 2000. There's, I think it was from like 2000, maybe late '99 where this uh, fan comes up on stage, Maynard fucking hip tosses him, holds yeah, him dude. in a rear... Yeah, <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about. He holds oh, yeah. him in a rear naked choke and continues singing. Mm -hmm. He just... Yeah, yeah. He just fucking holds him there for like five minutes. 
and he, he just finishes he the song. When he got him. I know, right? These are people that I would love to meet, but I'm legitimately terrified of because I know I could die. <laughs> I think uh, Rogan needs to hook up with like, uh, well, he's friends with Hickson and all the big time dudes, Eddie Bravo, and just get yeah. a celebrity jiu-jitsu tournament going. Dude, I would pay to go to every one of those. I'm like, telling people. you, dude, it just has to happen once unless it just took off that badass, you know what I mean? Because you got so many like Hollywoods out there and some of them I give credit to. I'm not going to go back and forth with people, but I give a lot of them credit, some of them credit, because they're doing classes with people. Now, there is other Hollywood that are just doing solid private classes, which don't get me wrong, jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu, but to get that look and to understand it and get that feel, you got to mix it up with every walk of life, you know what I mean? From a Mm -hmm. 13-year-old kid to a 300-pound man, you got to be able to just understand the sport and the way it works. So it's like saying you got to mix it up with a kid like me that was what seven, eight years old to a motherfucker like Larry. <laughs> Bro, I had a buddy come in <clears throat> two weeks ago and he texted me as he's walking in the door. He goes, Nothing but little teenagers here. And I was like, All right, I'm going to have every one of these little teenagers whip your ass. 30 <laughs> year old man walked out that door like a freaking puppy with his tail between his legs, dude. <laughs> All my kids. Dude, all right. So I feel like we need to switch subjects because we've okay. spent, we, dude, it's already been 51 minutes. All right. You can so, edit some of it down. I'm, I'm keeping all this in. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Uh, the only things I'm keeping out, uh, the only things I edit out literally are the, uh, are the like parts where it's quiet and like, that's it. I just cut that down. So right. next question is, yeah, total professional. So, next question is favorite punk bands. Me personally, it's Black Flag. Black Flag or Rancid for me, or uh, or the Clash or like Misfits. Yeah, I like the old school. Um, I'm just not a huge back Black Flag Misfits fan. I mean, don't get me wrong; like they're pioneers. You know what I mean? They help put it on the on the map for us out here, but I'm still like bad religion, no effects. Yeah, 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 you can. can you, I mean, but that's my generation. Those guys were just one before me. And I think for me personally, like I got to live the bad religion area, the no effects area, mm-hmm. like living in Vegas at 18, going to the freaking Huntridge on all these gutter punk shows for $7 a night and people shitting and puking all over themselves. So. And fucking fighting each other in the crowd. Right. So I'm real personal to those bands. Uh, Bad Religion, everybody knows, is my all-time favorite band of anything. So, yeah. But um, punk rock's such a good... I wish we could get a good punk rock band to come back around, man. Fuck. See, I would play punk rock, but I can't scream like that. I, I can't I can't do that. I could scream more of a like I'm working on more of a Whitechapel suicide silence type like thing. Right. But uh like I I would try to do that whole like that, but I can't. Check because out, um... go ahead. It, well continue. I was I was done. Continue. Okay, sorry. Um check out Snot. Uh, they were a band that came out in the late 90s and the lead singer ended up dying in a car accident. And really? He, tra- he was like uh, Bradley, dude. Traveled everywhere with his uh, boxer. But dude, their shit is like thrash punk, dude. So good. And his voice style is just completely different. Like nobody in punk, they were ahead of their time. If he wouldn't have died, dude, they would have, everybody would be listening to Snot today. Like that? 100, that's it. The one with his dog and the ball in the nose. That mm-hmm. is the album. All that right. is the album. But I think the reason I've like kind of believe it for some reason I've become a huge fan of the 80s. I don't know why. I I, I don't know why. I, 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 I have no clue. I mean, Hulk Hogan can go fuck himself. I don't care what he says. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a He's a racist piece of dog shit. He can go fuck himself. I don't give a, I don't care if that prevents me from going into the WWE. I could wrestle anywhere else. Doesn't matter. But Roddy Piper, uh, Roddy Piper, Ricky Steamboat, Andre the motherfucking giant, Ric Flair, 
who was more of a 70s guy, but still, Ric Flair, Harley Race, that's all I need to say. Hold on, Coco Beware. Bro. Coco Beware, too. It, and his fucking, uh, his bird, I think his bird's name was Freddy or some, some shit. Yeah, and you had Jake the Snake. And, and, and like, dude, we could spend another hour just talking about this. Yeah, Th- this is going to be... The whole era of wrestling I watched was the 80s. Like, when it hit the 90s, I was out of it. But I loved 80s wrestling, dude. It was just the most amazing thing to me. We're going to get back into this. But we need to switch topics. Because I... Yeah. I have we so many have just to another podcast on that. I have I have so many questions here. I don't think we're gonna be able to, you know. But yeah, we can talk about the 80s stuff after. Uh so my favorite punk band would have to be Misfits. I don't know why, but I just I've all for some reason I've gravitated towards them. I just uh for some reason I just thought their music was really good. And yeah, I like their look of Doyle with the whole fucking face paint and the flick yeah. up hair and jerry only and you know them and black flag too they always had controversial flyers like they was mm-hmm. always out with crazy stuff on there and just like when you saw one of their flyers you knew it was them like their artwork on it was mm-hmm. it stood out even and, the album covers and like the ramones dude don't get me yeah. started <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, I got nothing better to do than listen to music and l- do all this research on shit that I might be interested in. So, right. you know, I got I got damn near straight A's. I got I ain't got shit less to do. <laughs> you know, like keep growing that brain. So, luckily for me, I grew up around. Uh, I grew up around like the whole music scene. I grew up around was. Slipknot because of my dad was Slipknot, Corn, fucking uh other bands. Slipknot, Corn, Kill Switch Engage was more of uh it was more later in life. Later in life was Kill Switch Engage, Asking Alexandria, Bring Me the Horizon, uh A Day to Remember, like bands like that was later in life. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, my, I'd say my favorite punk band has to be the Misfits because their whole look and how it just thinking about it i know this isn't misfits this is black flag but henry rollins is a fucking madman oh yeah he's a genius even when he did his own thing he was still just a genius and like his the way he died in wrong turn 2 is the only reason i watched that movie the wrong (laughs) turn franchise is fucking terrible but that movie is great just because of him he made that movie he was a he was a uh they had did this whole reality show thing that was just dumb. It was a whole reality script thing and Henry Rollins played a uh marine that was like a veteran which you could honestly see Henry Rollins as a as a marine veteran cuz yeah. the, the dude's fucking badass. But he played it so well and he died in such a spectacular way. That's the reason that movie is so fucking great. The rest of the movies just are just depraved and just oh my god, they're terrible. They're like the later Hellraiser sequels. They're oh lord, they're so bad. Okay, <laughs> uh, as we go on into horror movies, favorite horror movie. This could be from to classify this. Well, th- this is uh, this can be from nineteen seven. Uh, from like Hitchcock era 1960 to until about like now you have over 60 years worth of movies to choose from the universal the universal monster stuff we're going to get into later I would probably just have to say Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original one. It was just so good, dude. So good. It was so, dude, me, that's such for a me as a kid, it scared the fuck out of me. Knowing like it was based on a true story, like well, yeah, 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 yeah. As a kid, when I was a kid, <laughs> dude, dude. that scroll, the opening text, oh lord. Yeah, yeah it was uh and I got a story I gotta hard. tell you after. After and we're I done recording this, the Friday the Thirteenth when they were coming out too, dude. Because, dude, it was ever 
Think about it. From 1980 to 1989, we got one every year. It was like the Saw movies from 2004 to 2010. It was one every fucking year. Yeah, and then you had um, Nightmare on Elm Street too. There. Yeah. Yeah, from 84 to like 95 or 92, because because uh, actually it was yeah it was like 92, 93 because of uh, Freddy versus Jason came out in 2003. And that still yeah. remains the highest yeah. box yeah. office yeah. horror movie of all time. When they were fighting in space, bro, I was over that shit. <laughs> so Jason X, <laughs> yeah, which was two thousand one. It's like what in the hell, dude? So, um, so you'd say OG Texas Chainsaw Massacre, nineteen seventy four. Yeah, nineteen seventy four Texas Chainsaw Massacre is probably the best movie for horrors. So, favorite horror? Are you familiar with horror movie trilogies? Uh, you know, I really haven't been watching horror movies in a couple of decades. But, uh, <laughs> I started, started doing jujitsu, became a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> You're like Caleb. He went into the military and became real nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Go somewhere to become mean and come out nicer. Yeah, I know, right? Super weird. Uh, your so options you, okay go for it options are fuck i would say scream but scream is scream's gonna have a new movie coming out in 2022 i was, I was honestly gonna say that right off the bat just because but you know, yeah but because dude i was watching the original scream earlier uh i think it was earlier this month and matthew lillard fucking kills it no it's still a great movie dude like it holds up 100 percent even like even if we go back to the 80s uh you know john carpenter's the thing oh yeah you you know the fucking the practical effects monsters in that movie still hold up over 30 years later yeah, still yeah. hold up and there i talked to i talked to many people and they're like oh yeah it doesn't hold up yes it does it like compared to the early 2000s cgi crap that came out like come on it's it still holds up i don't care what you say it does i like costume horror better than cgi horror yeah like pra- like body practical effects yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like in person yeah. cgi can go fuck itself i don't care what anyone says it's great for the superheroes action shit like that but yeah um, not, but in the horror in the horror realm nah no 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 cuz we have a bad track record yeah. But I think horror movie trilogies are. Well, the thing with horror movies is there is no in between. Like you could watch a comedy and you'd be like, "Yeah, it was kind of funny. That was super funny. It was okay." Horror is either good or it's not. There is no yeah. Like, there's no in between. There's yeah. no. It's kind of okay. It's either this yeah. movie's great or this movie's a pile of dog shit. Yeah, and I feel like there were so many piles of dog shit for a while that I just got away from that freaking scene. <laughs> so oh fuck now that i think about it i wrote this question and i can't even think of a horror movie trilogy because <laughs> like, they just keep making sequels i can't you know yeah. i can't let's just let's forget about that what question about chucky what about chucky he's got oh uh dude he's got so many movies Cause I, well, he, he's got like seven of them that's true. They keep making them fuckers too. Yeah, because he's got Child's Play, Child's Play Two, Child's Play Three, Cult of Chucky, Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky, which was a terrible. Film. What about um, Curse of Chucky, which is the latest one? Poltergeist. <sighs> outside of the remixes, though, I think outside of the remakes, too. I think Poltergeist might have been a trilogy, or actually, they might they might have been four Poltergeists or Polter plural poltergeist oh uh you know who i was uh listening to uh in preparation for this for some reason over the last few days i for over the last week i've been uh i've been on a johnny cash kick i've just been fucking just straight listening to any i mean i don't listen to country music 
because most of the country music scene is it's not my vibe. But Johnny Cash is an exception. He's a fucking legend. Oh, 100 percent He is the man. Mm-hmm. And Cash fan. I love him. He's the fuck he's one of the greatest musicians to ever live. Once I found out the huh? craziest part is he the crazy part is he's one of the greats that lived a full life too. You know? Yeah. Like he didn't die young, dude. He died old age with his girl. That's rad. And what kind of fucked me up was I found out that oh, Poltergeist is a trilogy. Outside of the 2015 remake, Poltergeist is a trilogy. Nailed that shit like a split hog. <laughs> uh, I would have to say Poltergeist too because I uh, I can't think of any trilogies off the top of my head. Poltergeist one was crazy with the swimming pool and the freaking oh god and the, the uh, dude. And the fucking the the TV the they're here you know like well you know what I rewatched that one I want to say within the last year dude and seen like all the Star Wars action figures all over the kids room I was like mm-hmm. that's badass dude it's so because it was cool. Steven Spielberg yeah but yeah. and just that whole era too like I had those action figures GI Joes and like that shit's gone now you know so it's just I don't it's know. worth so much fucking money. Yeah, because people are collecting that have, shit. I still have my pillowcase from when I was a kid, my Star Wars pillowcase. Dude, that's that's tight. That's really fucking cool. So, as we continue on to horror films, uh, what's your favorite horror movie franchise? Mm, again, I, I, I kind of stopped with the horror movies of the late 90s, so I would probably have to go with... Um, What's his name? Uh, Craven. Wes Craven. Yeah, so Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, I mean, and he's dipped into a lot of things. Wasn't He had his hands in Hellraiser and stuff too, right? Really? I, I want to uh, say Wes wait. Craven has his hands in a lot of different things. Like, not not a main guy, but he's like a... Assistant. Like an executive yeah. producer. Yeah. and like Just putting his input in. Because he died in 2015. Oh, did he? Yeah, I think he died of like a heart attack or something. Or it might have been old age. But what happened was he... Who did the Saws? The Saw franchise? Uh, well... Oh, it's Lion, dude. Yeah, Lionsgate. That was before... Because uh, the year before... Lionsgate did Saw in 2004. But the year before that, they did um, Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Ooh. And oh, that's the trilogy, the Firefly trilogy. Say, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I remember I bought the Firefly trilogy once it came out. Yeah. I bought the Steel Book. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't believe I forgot about the Firefly trilogy, dude. Oh my god. Because <laughs> dude, The Devil's Rejects is such a great movie. Yeah, that's crazy. So I, I had Malachi watch that movie, and he hated it. He for some reason he just hated it. And it kind of made me sad because it has the greatest ending to a film to have Freebird in of all time. Because sh- <laughs> <laughs> think about it. That shootout scene That's was perfect for Freebird. No, for sure, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a song that don't belong there but fit very well. Yeah. That and funny. that song, sound like that movie's soundtrack was just... Every single every single song was it's on point. Rob Zombie, come on! Like, <laughs> I'm. I mean, yeah. I was in love with his bass player for so long. The long green crazy hair up there. I was like, oh gosh, he's hot. I mean, uh, Rob Zombie. I love the guy. But stop putting your wife in your own movies, man. Yeah. Stop. Like, come on, dude. Jesus. I. I mean, I own the only like. Rob Zombie movies I don't physically own are uh, his Hall- his Halloween two and thirty one and like those are the only two I don't own physically. But like I like his movies, but you the best act the two best actors he's ever cast in any of his movies is Sid Haig and Bill Mosley. I I respect Rob Zombie for just the fact of 
his artwork you know what i mean like, mm-hmm. i remember he put an interview out and because i was a rob zombie fan dude i went watch and play and everything and i was like man when's that next album coming out and he put an interview out said he's gonna make movies i'm like you dumb motherfucker <laughs> you make music not movies and then, came, and then it came out I and was then like, house of a thousand corpses came out and then i was like all right i'm the dumb motherfucker keep doing what you're doing you know? <laughs> and he was actually on rogan yeah that was a yeah. good one and Super he good. he talked about how he's trying he tried to do a groucho marx biopic and he also tried to do a botch broad street bullies movie and all of his other aspirations have nothing to do with horror films yeah because like um the devil's rejects had that fucking perfect ending where they all die and then he redconned it with three from hell that's how all horror movies should end there shouldn't be a survivor there shouldn't be the hero like they should all just die and like the devil's rejects did yep 100 percent yep and then if you want another sequel to it, just bring on another crop of people to die. Yeah, and they just have them, you know. Yeah, just yeah. be like, just don't have it turn out like uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies did. Like with the next generation. Oh, my Lord. That movie was so bad. Matthew McConaughey, what they did was uh, since he overacted in that movie, what they did was uh, his agency – or the people that were representing him, what they did was they made sure his name was not on the release of the movie. And so it inevitably got released. Like they had it canned for like maybe five years and then it got released with his name until he got like big box office fame. Really, and the, yeah. the movie bombed. It, I <laughs> back on it to hopefully try to make some money back off of it. It, it was it bombed. It was it was so bad. But I think my favorite horror movie, remake friend, gold, bro. Hmm? Yeah, you, you can't, can't remake gold. gold. It's just that'd be like trying to redo the, the the Freddies or something like that. Like you just can't like leave it alone. They even tried to do a Nightmare on Elm Street remake because Michael Bay, for some reason, in the early two thousands, had to stick his dick in every single horror movie franchise. He did it right. with Friday the Thirteenth, which was. I can admit Friday his Friday the thirteenth remake I liked. I thought it was okay. His Nightmare on Elm Street one though, god awful. It was it was garbage. It was so bad. And uh I would say my favorite horror movie franchise since for some reason I've become a huge Saw fan over the last year and a half. Saw's badass. Like I've become a huge, huge Saw fan to the point where once they announced that this new movie's coming out with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, I'm there 100% of the time. Twice on Sunday. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, so they did so good with all of them. Just, like, the storyline, the life lessons in them, the torturing, just the devices, like, all of it. Is just, it's creepy as fuck. It keep you on the edge of your couch for the whole thing because you know something's going to happen, but you don't know. You, you don't know where it's going to come from. And, and when it gets you, you're so mad at it. You're like, oh, you're like, son of a, you're like, and what I've noticed is saw what it does is it teaches you to appreciate life. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw taught you how to appreciate the, the it taught you the importance of family. Because yeah. the saw is family. Yeah. Uh, Leprechaun taught you to not be greedy. And, uh, and don't look for the end of the rainbow. And don't look for the end of the rainbow because you're never gonna know what. Yeah, you don't. You don't know what. You, you don't want to know what you're gonna find. Same with oh, same with the fucking Leprechaun Origins, 2014. That movie is dog shit. Well, it was also mm-hmm. produced by WWE Studios, but you know, they yeah, the only two good movies they ever made were um, the two see no evil movies with Kane. Yeah, those are kind of cool. Yeah, those those were good. They should have stopped there. I like uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, dude. The the uh, when when he kills the cop with the uh, 
uh, I think he killed him with like silly string or something, and then yeah. he just fucking exploded. The FX uh, in that movie are just the makeup work, everything, the actors, the way they ran it is just it's gold, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I, you can't, you can't read, can't replicate it. it. You can't, dude. You, and it's that's back in there with like the Jasons and the Freddies, you know. It's like you can't, and the Michael it. Myers and all them Myers, yeah, it's so good. Our favorite classic universal horror movie. So we're talking Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Mummy, like Boris Karloff, Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney Jr. type stuff. We can even go back to the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> That's sick ass tattoo. Question. <laughs> all right so next question <laughs> is uh have you seen the trailers for spiral from the book of saw no no i i can uh send them over to me yeah i can i can send them over to you and after this is over since you see how i can share my screen i i can show you some of the trailers they're like maybe two minutes long all right but Dude, it looks like a fucking great movie. I'm so excited. It comes out next Friday. The um, What else is coming out? Because I'm a huge Guy Ritchie fan. He's got that Wrath of Man coming out. Mm-hmm. That looks really good. And uh, I don't know if you've seen, uh, seen me put that on my story, but my dog, Coda, he was uh, he was rolling around, and then I, I, got the perfect, I got the perfect shot of him looking at me. And I took that photo, and I was like, oh, yeah, this will be perfect. And then I put, uh, when you find out that the new Saw movie is coming out next Friday, and he's just, look, he's just looking. I'm pretty, yes. sure you, I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Uh, if not, I can pull it up. Uh, I, I don't know if the, <laughs> you see how, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, really? <laughs> and uh, he played video games on my YouTube channel, believe it or not. Like, I, 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 put the, <laughs> I put the headset on him, and he was just, I mean, I was playing the video games, but he had the headset on, and he was just looking at me like, it, yeah, it, was, it was perfect. If I could find the video, I'll send it to you. You should get it to where, like, he's sitting in front of you and you can sit behind them videoing it and then just, like, have your arms out in front playing it so it looks like the back of his head and the TV, like... Yeah, I would do that, but I can't get him to stay still for that amount of time because he, he'll he just lay down because he's old. He'll stay just... Stoned. Even if I get him stoned, he'll just go to sleep. Like, <laughs> Malachi, he used to be a really energetic dog. And then Malachi you know, got him stoned and now he's turned into the dog he is. He just wants to sleep all the time. I know they're all that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the spiral from the book of Saw. It's got Samuel L. Jackson in it. Chris Rock wrote the movie, provides, provided the story ideas and in it, and is executive uh, producing the film. Nice. And he's playing, um, he's playing a, uh, a detective called Detective uh, Zeke Banks and In, Samuel Jackson. Next week? Yeah, next Friday, May 14th. And hmm. he he's uh his father is being played by Samuel L. Jackson. And uh it's being directed by uh the person who directed the three best saw the two best or two or three best saw movies after the first one. Which was Darren Lynn Bousman. He made Saw 2, which is the one with Donnie Wahlberg in it. Yeah, that one was crazy. Number three and number four, which is when Donnie Wahlberg died. Yep. And so uh, that chick fell in the pit with all the syringes and shit. Yeah, that was <laughs> make you weep like make you curl up like a little girl, huh? <laughs> I hate needles. I do too. <laughs> which is which is weird because you have all these tattoos. Yeah, but there's an outcome to those, you know. You <laughs> there's not just I get, <laughs> like, I get a bond with the homie putting them on, and I get to enjoy them the rest of my life. But isn't some foot, 
<laughs> Bitch, don't give a shit. Stab it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I already answered this question in the beginning of the interview. Favorite metal band is Trivium, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Dude, Shogun is such a good album. Dude, uh, you know how I found out about them? I was playing a WWE video game and they were on the soundtrack. Nice. From, I think the song is called Of Prometheus and the Crucifix. It's off the Shogun album. That's and it, such a good album. And it was, uh, I think it was SmackDown versus Raw 2010. And I was a, I mean, I'm still a wrestling fan because of Stone Cold shirt, but like back when I was a kid, I was like, you know, full, you know, like I'm going to Stone Cold stun you, you know what I mean? Like that. And I, I'd play the games religiously. In a, and that was the point in time when Guitar Hero 3, actually, no, it was years after Guitar Hero 3. But at that point in time, I was like religiously playing Guitar Hero 2. But... We Even talk. just outside of the jujitsu aspect of Trivium, like their music is phenomenal, and just yeah. the fact that the two guitarists break up. Okay, at this point in the song, and and it's in the same song. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna play lead, so you can sing, and now I'm gonna sing, so you can play lead. Dude, you don't see that in a band. So for two people to take like that, I'm the lead guitarist or vocalist ego, and set that aside to make just great music, and mm-hmm. then you gotta jiu-jitsu practitioner on top of it i'll buy it all day because matt heafy is uh he he's the lead singer and he plays guitar and believe it or not he started in the band when he was 12 years old bro when i first heard them and then i looked him up it is so crazy dude i just don't even understand how some of those big voices come out of these little dudes (laughs) You would expect somebody like my size or Larry, like we've talked about, you know. Yeah. I mean? and, and then here's a little homie, just like, Dee-dee-dee. like, <laughs> and, you know, like, pounds soaking wet. Fuck, dude, it's just crazy. And uh, fuck, like that makes me think. He's just such an amazing, and he does Twitch streams. That's how he mm-hmm. like. That's how he practices, and I've. Uh, I've like gone into a few of his Twitch streams being like, yo, what's up? How you doing? And like, I caught it in the middle of class. I was passing the class. So we weren't doing, the teacher was legitimate. The teacher, all he did was he just fucking sat there, got up and left. (laughs) Like seriously, all he did was we were sitting there waiting for him to start class. And it was in the middle of class. He got up, walked away. Didn't come back for the rest of the class. (laughs) <laughs> we, me and uh, me and my friend Jeremy, who I had on the podcast before, he we started dying and making dumb jokes back and forth. It was it was great. So I like I I was still in class because it was on the computer, but I went over to my PS4 and I have Twitch on my PS4. So I logged into one of his Twitch streams and just watched him kill it. And, so good. So he's a idiot too, huh? He's uh huh? I like to call him idiots, you know, with video games. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he doesn't play video games. All he does is he just practices like music. He just plays trivium songs. Oh, but he does it on that because I thought on so that platform. Is just that platform, okay. Yeah, I mean, he also. No, you're good. You're good. Well, technically, I'm a video game idiot because that's what I do on YouTube. Thanks, you <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> I've raised a couple, so. <laughs> uh, but he like he plays like PC games, like shooters and stuff. But that's be- in between the shredding. So next question is favorite horror movie villain. For example, is Jason, Michael Myers, Ghostface. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I think Freddy. He was just so animated. And played just, by a fucking amazing actor in Robert England. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And they just like, what was it? Uh, when they're all in the psych ward and <laughs> picks her up and he's all prime time, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was yeah. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yeah, just Actually, like, it might, I, th- I think it might have been Nightmare 2. It was cool because as a kid, for me watching him, you would laugh at him. 
yeah not being scared at the same time so it made it easier to like process easier to yeah and uh the thing about me is it was super because when i was a kid you couldn't get me to watch a horror you couldn't even get me to be have a horror movie on tv 50 you couldn't even have me to be like six inches or maybe a foot like i am with this laptop you couldn't do that right but now here i am fucking like my knowledge of horror movies is just like that's the main genre of movie i watch now i mean i still watch comedies and all that stuff but i mainly like enjoy watching horror films and that's what i want to write because i want to write a horror film that's slow that's kind of loosely interpreted by my life because if you think about it with the mom dying that's perfect for a horror film and like how it happened and like the story i kind of have built up in my head of how it's going to be set in the 80s and it's going to be like real christian kind of driven i'm looking to piss a lot of people off Should i'm i'm i just i think that's you're not making a right horror movie if you don't piss at least a few people off you know what i mean well, I mean, there's certain genres that have to just be controversial or what's the point, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you listen, and I don't want to keep referring to our whole podcast with Joe's stuff, but like yeah. you know, him and him and Chappelle were talking, it, you know, like it's so dangerous for them. They, I was just listening to it today, and they were talking about Eddie Murphy. Like, Eddie Murphy couldn't say what he was saying in the 80s, walking back. Or fucking stage. Richard Pryor. Yeah, you know, oh, there's a faggot in the crowd. You know how I know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, yeah God, he'd, he'd be like bitch go do this you know like yeah, you can't do that not. yeah today and like how sensitive people are it pisses me off because well, there's like about go ahead there's two types of people in this world there's the people that are looking that are looking to be offended that are doing nothing at all just lo- going around on twitter looking to be offended and there there's the people that are gonna offend I don't mean to flip you off, but like, yeah, gonna exactly. offend. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's just stupid. Like, and that's one thing I enjoy about Guy Ritchie and um, Tarantino right now. I mean, they're still mm-hmm. just pushing that envelope of it's Hollywood, it's movies. Like, you guys need to get with it. I mean, I'm surprised Hateful Eight's still on Netflix. Because if you're not <laughs> pushing the envelope, what the fuck are you doing it for? You know yeah, what I mean? I, if you're not going to evolve the business, why are you not doing it? Why are right. you doing this? And why are we watching it if it's going to be played out everyday life like you're watching a movie to escape from reality or you go yeah. to a comedy show to get a laugh, you know? And mm-hmm. Comedians are only saying the shit all of us are saying in a car. They're saying and the shit we're thinking. We're, like, Yeah, we're thinking. So, But we don't have the balls to say. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that's just like a horror movie. You think horror movies are scary? Look at what's going on in the real world. That's some scary shit. Dude, we're living in one. Yeah, exactly. Like, say Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that's scary. It's not as scary as what's going on in the real world right now. That's. Bro, I got more. I got more of a chance of getting killed at the liquor store down the street than I do Freddy killing me in my fucking dreams tonight. Yeah, I know, right? Like, exactly, exactly my point. So. Oh, so, so you, you'd say Freddy for favorite horror movie villain. Yeah. Uh, I would look, I would say Michael Myers because he was the first guy I kind of grabbed, gravitated towards. Gra- Fuck, what's the word? I, I keep saying it wrong. Now you got me all fucked up. <laughs> Gravi- gravitated. Gra- gravita- yeah, gravitated. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And even Ash versus Evil Dead, Ash Williams, fucking Bruce Campbell from the evil dead movies he's a great yeah. actor and that's just a great character arc that you see from the three films and the, even the tv series that's still on netflix somehow when it's so, good it's good yeah so what horror icons would uh if you could pick two horror icons that have not got a crossover movie because I think the only ones have been um, Freddy versus Jason and Alien versus Predator. But if there was two horror, if you could pick two horror icons and make a crossover film, who would you choose? 
I would make a comedy with Chucky and the Leprechaun. <laughs> Dude, I would pay to see. I, I'd pay to see that shit. I'd fucking fund, dude. I'd fund it to be a, to be executive producer. I, <laughs> and if you had Brad Dorif voicing Chucky, that's the only just way. Don't, don't even know the storyline right now, but just to see those two idiots going after it would be pretty fun. Because if you think about it, Brad Dorif is the Chucky voice. Mm. I mean, you gotta love uh, what's his name. The dude that played Luke Skywalker. Um, oh, Matt Hamill. Yeah, Mark, you, Mark Hamill. So. Yeah, because he he did the voice for Joker too, and yeah. in the new Chucky remake, he did the voice for Chucky. I mean, I I love the guy, but it's either Brad Dorif or no Chucky. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because it's like it's like having it's like having uh, Freddy Krueger without Robert England. They did cool. that and it bombed. Like you know, Heath Ledger is the Joker. Yeah. Well, Which Joaquin, Joaquin, Phoenix, Joaquin but, Phoenix did it, but he had a different stage to set it on. You know, that what is I mean? true. It, yeah. You know, Joaquin, what um, Heath Ledger had to do, he had a role. Like they knew what the Joker was, or what they felt the Joker was. Mm-hmm. Joaquin, he said he made the Joker. Like there was mm-hmm. no, there was no. History pre history it was before the dark knight trilogy yeah so i give him and what he did was gold i mean just gold but yeah Heath Ledger's still badass and i think that the the christopher nolan like dark knight trilogy is the best live action films dc's ever done because dc yeah. is dog shit when it comes to live action movies let's be honest here they are marvel is where it's at when you go to live action but if you go to cart, if you go to cartoons, DC, DC's got it all the way. And that's what sucks is I am a huge Batman fan, but I watch Marvel all the time just because of their storylines the, and the movies they're putting out. Are just they're so, just so much better. But Dark Knight, Dark Knight is I Dark watch Knight it trilogy is before. fucking the the greatest of just that's just it. Yeah. So now let's go into. Let's go with the last two jujitsu questions. Favorite jujitsu practitioner? Okay, so this is one I thought about. Um, I was hoping you'd think about this one. This one's hard because I mean it's it's easy to say like you have your founders, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in my style of Brazilian, so you have Carlson and then you have Helio, which you know the Godfathers, <clears throat> and then you have the legend Hickson. And then Royce. We all know my dog's name's Jim Hickson. So you can cuss. When, you can curse, dude. Go ahead. I've been I cursing just, this entire podcast. I have too. I don't even know why I stopped at that point. But uh when you get down to like on paper, there's not a Gracie better than Hodger, dude. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like Hodger on paper has the records. Like if you look up what they can prove for a record, Hodger is by far probably one of the best practitioners in the world right now <clears throat> in a gi and i mean now you got gordon coming up behind and obviously will surpass a lot of those records at his young age mm-hmm. so i'd probably say hodger and hickson all right i listen to a i listen to a grappling podcast and they always ask people like your mount rushmore of jiu-jitsu what are the faces you would put up there and like, oh, that's a rough one man <laughs> yeah and uh i was talking to uh, we both we talked about him before, Jamie Kilstein. Oh, I love Jamie Kilstein. Yeah, I do too. So I was I told him that uh, his podcast, Rear Naked Radio, that name yeah. is fucking all. Aw- it's it's perfect. Like if you think about it, I'm not I'm surprised that, that name wasn't taken already. It's just a great yeah. name. And He's like a I, couple of ones. And I told him that Rear Naked Radio is just a, just a fucking great name. And he was mm. like, he like he responded back like six hours. I was sleeping at the time. He, I seen it in the morning. He was like, fuck yeah, dude, thanks. <laughs> I was you like, know, dude, he's yes. Active. He's yeah. very active on his social media. Like if people comment on there, and I've noticed too, like if you play in his feeds, he doesn't feed into the negativity. Like if you're cool, mm. he'll, he'll interact with you, but mm. he'll... It could be like 10 cools and then this asshole and he'll jump over that asshole to go to the next cool yeah. conversation. Cause I it's... remember, um, Oh, I don't mean to cut you. You done? You're good. You're I, I'm good. sorry. I didn't mean to, I don't want to be that guy. No, it's all good. All right. Cause I remember since he's a wrestling fan, 
and I'm a wrestling fan. You can tell from the Stone Cold shirt. But um, he, it was the weekend of NXT Takeover Vengeance. I think it was right. It was in February. It was the weekend of Valentine's Day, which was the day of the pay per view. And I, I was like, oh, because he was f- feeling all depressed and stuff. I was like, hey, this weekend's NXT Takeover uh, Vengeance Day. And that because I remember I sent you that screenshot. Yeah. And he was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then I told him what the stipulation was for because the Royal Rumble winner did all stuff. He was he had to keep an eye out for everything to keep everyone on their toes. That's a whole another can of worms. But <laughs> he was he was like, oh, fuck yeah. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, cool. I was like, hell yeah, dude. And when we were talking wrestling, that was the first dude I thought of because he's just so huge about it. Like, at least in my community, because I listen to his podcast and he's always mm-hmm. dipping into the pro wrestling side of it. And he's done a few videos with uh, pro wrestlers like Thunder Rosa and uh, fuck other wrestlers. And I'm actually happy that I have some friends in the pro wrestling business, which is good. I mean, they're indie guys from like, there's this one dude in New York, then one dude in, one dude in Iowa, one dude in Oklahoma, you know, like it's because of the internet. But yeah. like, I think it's good that I'm net, networking now so I can kind of get my foot in the door for, because I for talked sure. to that one dude in, uh, his, I, his wrestling name is Bam Sullivan. I started, I hit him up uh, like in 2018 but I've, I've been a fan of him ever since like 2015 when he like first started. And it was, that's kind of strange because, you know, this is New York professional wrestling and we're in California. I'm in California. That's ways away. But uh, like I hit him up because it was the first year I was going into uh, weight training. And he's like a, he's like a body guy. He's like a body wrestler guy doing the whole workout thing. And uh, like I asked him, to, like I asked him for advice, and I was super respectful about it. I was like, "Yo, I don't want to interrupt your time or anything, but if you have a few minutes, I got some questions." And then he was like, "Yeah, sure. Let me uh, give me ten minutes. I'm gonna drive my buddy home and then fire away." And then the ten minutes went by, and then we just like spent two hours talking about like uh, how weightlifting will help you with certain things and how keeping a regimen and diet and how that can even help you into professional wrestling and how amateur wrestling helps and how picking the right school is very important and how you want to go how you want to start with picking a beginner school which is where you learn the fundamentals and then go to a finishing school which is someone like Lance Storm like someone with a big name in order to get that full experience and then you can go to a certain you don't want to go into like the big school as with no experience because then you're just going to end up like punch you and you don't know your fucking elbow from your asshole, you know, like no. you don't know what to do a jujitsu term. You don't know an arm bar from a leg lock yeah. or a knee bar from a fucking rear naked choke. Right. So next jujitsu question is favorite jujitsu submission. Darsh, baby. <laughs> I I I felt like I knew I knew where this was going because you posted all about day. it a few days ago. It's all day, baby. Because you did on on May the fourth. That was pretty cool. How you, you brought in those helmets. Yeah, my those were my buddies, dude. He posted he was walking through a Walmart with the Mando helmet on, and he took a picture of himself on the Walmart surveillance cameras. That was that's fucking and, uh, cool. And he posted it, and I was like, "Are those yours? Is that yours?" He's like, "Yeah." I said, "Bring it in tonight. I want to take a picture." He's like, "I got a Boba one too. I'll bring it in." So, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I'm not much of a picture dude, but I love my Star Wars and Jiu Jitsu and everything. Day for it. I mean, I'm not much of a picture guy, but. I feel like if it's like someone I haven't seen in a while, like when you came down, I, I was hoping to, you know, take a picture to kind of be like, oh yeah, it's the first time I've seen you in 10 years type thing. Like, it's not a picture every time I come down and see you, yeah. but like, it's just be like, oh yeah, this was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, the moments, the moments are cool to capture. Yeah. And uh, believe it or not, I got some tattoo questions too. Yeah, because uh, but first we go into um, 
if you could make a dream MMA card, what would the card look like? I don't even know. I thought about that one all day. Um, are we taking age out? Age. Like, every single fighter is in the prime of their life, prime of their career. I would like to see Krokop versus uh, Francis Ngannou. John Jones Silva. I would say Nick and Cerrone. I don't know if they could meet at a, I think they'd probably come to 175 together. And every single fighter, whatever weight that you want them to fight at, they're fighting at. No questions asked. So just a fight to fight, huh? A fight to fight. Not- and that would definitely be Anderson and John Jones would be the main event. And then, oh, that's a B. Break <laughs> off and uh, France and Ghana would be sick. That's a main, that's just two fights right there, dude. That's a main uh, event and a co main right there. Yeah. God, there'd be so many good ones, dude. Because, I mean, you had like the era of Tito and Chuck, and then now you have. To see like the old school versus the new school and their prime to see how their systems would set up would be rad. And how like different they are. Yeah, because you had like the old school bangers that were figuring out, you know, bouncing from gym to gym to private train here at each school to where now you have 7-Eleven on every corner. It's a mixed martial arts school that these kids are getting trained in. So I think just the grind was a lot harder in the 80s 90s early 2000s to where now it's handed to all these kids so let's put chuck liddell with uh chuck's one of my favorite fighters too Usman, dude that i would i would pay to see that shit they're bangers they're both finishers and bangers so liddell and Usman would be another one and then I wouldn't mind seeing prime BJ Penn mm-hmm. like when he beat Carlos Uno in four and a half seconds or whatever it is against Khabib because BJ Penn's one of my freaking all time favorites too. So mm-hmm. I think I'd go with those five fights. Uh, when you mentioned Chuck Liddell, the first thing that popped in my head is that one knockout of. Uh when he was fighting uh Rashad Evans and that uppercut yeah. yeah just boom like he fucking straight down just just you know like he fucking he was out kind of like how Masvidal looked a couple weekends ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> just and all the sweat that just flew from his dude out of his braids that was picture perfect like Literally. dude that was insane all right favorite movie genre of all comedies. time. Comedy. Uh, I, love, I love comedies. Favorite comedian? I mean, I'm going to get off Joe's dick for a minute. I'm going to get Chappelle. <laughs> Chappelle. Uh, I, I got mad respect for Chappelle because being the comedian he is, he's so raw. He doesn't hold anything back. And uh, he's just a human, dude. And I think being, I hate to like be bring race into it but like he's an african-american comedian that will touch on every race and every genre and pick on himself as well to where like um i have a problem with mike epps mike epps is a suit and it's god i love his movies dude but when you watch his stand-up dude he is just so like one-sided on his racism jokes kind of like chris rock yeah, that makes it an actual racist like set, you know what I mean? And I can see where, and I'm not a person to fall into that, but I see yeah, so many me either, me either. Set with it to where like Chappelle, Chappelle's just firing, bro. He don't care who's there. He's firing on all cylinders. Chappelle's the man in my eyes. Oh, did you know that Mike Epps was in the third, actually, he, he was in the second or th- I think he was in the second Resident Evil movie. Was he? I didn't yeah. Even touch that. The Paul W.S. Anderson series of Resident Evil films. I love that fool and um, all about the Benjamins, man. He is so fucking funny in that movie. All right. So to the single pro wrestling question I have 
is since we talked we touched on wrestling favorite wrestler of all time <laughs> i mean i guess when i was watching it and the only one that i tried to be like and i wanted to be was the ultimate fucking warrior dude fuck just that energy when he would come out like and just, uh, just i'd start running around the house like a little idiot tying stuff onto my arm <laughs> yeah. fucking losing blood circulation just uh. <laughs> Him and Rowdy Piper, though. Rowdy Piper was always around. Dude, I fucking love Rowdy Piper. He's yeah. he's the man. Oh, uh, there was an A and E documentary that dropped on Roddy Piper, right? And I watched the shit immediately. And you know what he said? One of his uh, quotes was he said in a promo. He, uh, it was, I think it was something to the in the lines of, uh, if you don't want to. If you don't run and wrestle me, you can. F- I have two words for you: fuck you and fuck off. <laughs> and this was on live television too in 1987. It's perfect. Well, that's when they're smoking cigarettes while playing baseball on TV too. So, and you know what, Jake? The, speaking of Jake the Snake Roberts, you know what he would do as a pre-match warm-up instead of doing jumping jacks and fucking jump rope and all that stuff? He'd smoke a cigarette, and then he'd take that final drag off that cigarette, put it out with his boot, and just go out. Oh, that would be a stinky bastard to roll with. <laughs> he, yeah, that's that's what he would do. Okay, to go to the movie questions, favorite Bring Me the Horizon record, since you kind of dove back in. For those who have a heart. Uh, hmm? For those who have a heart. Oh, yeah. That's uh, 2015, I want to say, when I was checking it out earlier. That's Bring Back the Horizon, right? Oh, um, 2015 was... All right. So we'll, we'll just finish that later. Well, okay. Well, uh, thank you for joining me. Plug your shit. Uh, yeah. Um. I'm here. You can find me on Instagram at uh, BJJ Freak, uh, BJJ underscore Freak. Uh, also, we're over at Gracie Hemet and Humaita in Hemet, California, over on Yale, Florida. If you're in the area, you want to try out some jiu-jitsu, do some jiu-jitsu, swing on in, man. We're there all week long. You can look up our schedule online. And like I said, find me on Instagram. If you're going to stop in, shoot me a DM. I'll make sure I'm there. We can hang out, grab some lunch after. All right, cool. Thank you for joining me. This has been the Culture Shock. We have to cut it short, but I'm going to have him on on another episode when time is allowed. But Yeah, we'll do the next one face-to-face. Dude, that would that'd be awesome. And hopefully smoke a couple joints after. Yeah, and before. <laughs> and, well, uh, yeah, that would work. Yeah, all right. So thank you, thank you guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.